Lady girls and gentlemen boys, welcome back to the main story now. So we just had an episode of Fields that we have already finished, which makes me sad. I thought that story was going to go on for a lot longer. But now we're back to Project Zero Dawn. If you remember, we were to go to the ancient ruins beneath the citadel and unravel the unbelievable truth of the project. So we have to go to Sunfall, right? <clears throat> Evidence indicates that the facility where Elizabeth Sobat worked on Project Zero Dawn lies buried beneath the citadel. And we are right here. And I'm being chased by birds and oxen. Do you people not have other things to do? Oh god, that's more than just oxen. Oh, those are big cats. People, save me. I'm your master. against the howling forbidden west. Thanks for the history lesson. But they have no idea what lies beneath. We will learn much from this Aloy. That's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm hoping. Look at this place. Oh, is that an arena? Wow. It's like ancient Rome, only better. You will regret not stopping when you're in the thick of it. Shut up. Tend to know me. All right. Let's do this. Oh my god, I'm so psyched. It is an arena. Just like the Romans. You fight a lion. Or a hippo. The sun ring. I bet those the proud tradition of the Kaja. It's not like this in Meridian. At least. Give them time. I'm sure they missed. my father. Holy crap. Damn. I did not know they could do that. Nice to have a break. Something tells me that I'll have to now do that. Now we get to see if your attack on their focus network was entirely successful. Success. <laughs> Welcome to the Citadel, Aloy. I'll check back with you in a moment. In the meantime, around. I love this Citadel. Hello. Outlanders. If you want to hear about today's bounties, head for the throne room. You're not going to make any shards by standing out here. Okay, let's go. Mercenary bottom feeders. I'll take the shards, even if it means having to listen to Bahavas. I hear yeah, I know, right? Looking for one of their own. Stupid Bahavas. Accomplished is prolonging our exile. By Outfit. the glory of the sun revealed. Behold, radiant Edaman, the one true sun king, the light in shadow, whose will is light and whose light is law. I command Lucian Bahavas to speak in my behalf. By the will of Radiant Edaman does the sun glare down mercilessly upon the traitor Uthid. To the hunter who brings his head to us shall go a bounty of 500 shards. More prisoners than royalty, don't you think? Mm. Love your hair. You and I need to chat, Citadel, little Huntress. The Green the Tent King. down in Shadowside. But he refused I'll to be waiting. When kind of busy. And fled, and in doing so, demonstrated wanton disregard for the safety We both know you're no killer for hire. Uthid is innocent. So come see go me forth, then, while there's Lander, still time to save him. Do the will of the sun. So, the way in I spoke of is right behind you. You've got to be kidding. Not at all. And you needn't worry about the Kestrels. They'll be too busy acting important to pay attention to you. First time in the Citadel, gotta see the Go sun to the grand from on high. But the Kestrels... Do, am I gonna have to kill the kid? They want us to see this, boy! The Balustrade. It's a short drop from there. Is there a way now? Climb down here? You sure? You sure? You sure? It's not letting me jump down. Balustrade. Oh, oh, the balustrade, I'm sorry. It's a short drop from there. Forgive me, I did not know what that word meant. <coughs> I kind of fucked that up, didn't I? God damn it, I have to do it again. Drop from there. 
Oh, the balustrade, you could have said so. There you go. If I were a guard, I would see this. This counts as sketchy behavior. Uh, am I going up? Am I going down? Oh, there. The other side of the tower. Look for a vent. Look for a vent. I see you've been here before. Obviously. Now, it's very important that you hear what I'm about to say. I've shown you the way in, but this humble vent marks a point of no return. Before you descend into the depths here, you should be fully committed, equipped, and focused. No distractions. If you have errands to run, do them first or hold your peace. I won't tolerate whining. Is that clear? You'll tolerate what I give you, Silence. I didn't ask you along for the ride. Yeah, I'm right. Let's go. I'm ready as I'll ever be. I'm heading down. I've spent a lifetime trying to uncover the secrets of this world. Where the machines came from. How the old ones achieved such marvels only to fall into silence and death. A lifetime of failure, as year by year, decade after decade, I hit walls I could not break, doors I could never breach. Hello. Until a Nora Huntress marched out of the Savage East. And, voila, for her, all the deepest secrets of the Earth were laid bare. I suspect you will have an easier time with this door than I did years ago. Hold for identiscan. Genetic profile confirmed. Entry authorized. Malfunction. Malfunction. Oh. Malfunction. Are you Malfunction. kidding me? You don't hear me laughing. Shut up. There's gotta be another way. Hey! Elizabeth Sobek here! Requesting access! Access request acknowledged. Root command functions available. Do you wish to proceed? I do! Get me through this door! Analyzing. Primary access inoperable due to mechanical failure. Emergency venting procedure likely to circumvent blockage. Do you wish to proceed? Yes. Emergency venting authorized. I underestimated you. See, by now I... Whoa. Guess you can't have everything. That will draw attention. We won't have this place to ourselves for long now. <laughs> oh, we? Great. Last I checked, I was the one whisking my life down here. Yes, fine. Now, will you please get moving? There's so much to learn in less time than I'd hoped. Oh, great. They're gonna find this place. Managed to hide it for so many years. We're here for two Welcome minutes and we ruin it. Project Zero Dawn. Zero Dawn. We found it. We found it. Are you really so surprised? This is a yes. It's dick. Zero emotions. This morning's unfortunate incident with Dr. Popovich huh? is another example of a reception's need for additional support. We appreciate that Zero Dawn is an immensely complicated project, but as staff who serve the front line, we are tired of being neglected. As we have already requested, we need human translators, fluent in Polish for example, security staff who can subdue and rage embryologists, for example, and dermal sedatives to calm persons who are screaming in Polish while hurling shells at vases of reception staff, for example. Yes, most of the candidates are reasonably calm and well-behaved, but we need help handling the exceptions to that rule. The How many people... ...detect multiple failures. Attempting repair. So, what was this room? An entrance hall, perhaps. Yeah, this was reception. How many people were here? A reception continues to require additional support managing ZD Zero Dawn candidates when they arrive at the facility. Many are frightened or confused, some are highly agitated, though these are not the sorts of persons who are accustomed to having information withheld from them. At minimum, we need human translators, the uh, lying bots are not sufficient, and mild sedatives for the extreme cases. Any and all support would be welcome. Perhaps you could stop responding to one of these mails. Holy crap. So these people Have are a look around. Not used to having information withheld from them. So they're high uppers? Please Be take a seat and 
wait for your name to be called. Very a selection of beverages and people. snacks are available. A smaller room. Soundproofing. Would it be possible to improve the soundproofing between VR1 and lounge area? Most of the candidates stay quiet during the presentation, but ones who scream or sob can plainly be heard by the candidates waiting their turn in the lounge. So this is where they get some information that is kind of ruining their mood. We need to get hold of that information. I want to know what they found out. Or what they were presented. Oops. My bad. Uh, nope, it's the wrong one. Oh, shit. Oh, dear. Where was it? Which one was it? Oh, dear. I fucked up. That one. For the fifth time, please restock the lounge selection of herbal teas. Okay, first world problems. What else is there in here? There are no no skeletons. Nobody's dead here, so this place wasn't overrun. Abandoned, maybe? Or everyone proceed into viewing room one for an important message regarding the first one. Here we go. What was this place? Here we go. A holographic theater. CD01 data intact. Initiating playback. Oh god. This is it. Oh god. This is it. We're gonna find Welcome out what, to why Project the game. Zero Dawn. I am General Harris, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the United States of America. I'm sure you've heard the rumors that Zero Dawn is a top secret super weapons program. The technological miracle that will save us from the Pharaoh Plague if Operation Enduring Victory can hold off the robots long enough. The reason I'm sure you've heard the rumors is that I'm the one who spread them, and they are all lies. Zero Dawn is not a super weapons program, and it will not save us. Nothing will save us. And here's why. By the time the glitch was noticed, it was already too late. Nothing could stop the Pharaoh Plague. Nothing can. Its robots will continue to replicate and devour the biosphere. Life on Earth will be destroyed. Our planet reduced to a barren sphere. Global extinction is inevitable. No matter how many we kill, the robots just keep exponentially making more. If we had their deactivation codes, we could shut them all down. The entire swarm. But since their cryptographic protocols use polyphasic entangled waveforms, cracking a code set would take half a century. At best, we've got 16 months. Not exactly what you'd call a survival option. The destruction of a biosphere is not the sort of apocalypse you can wait out in a fallout shelter or a space station. There will be no Earth left to reclaim. Just a lifeless, toxic rock with several million pharaoh robots on it, hibernating waiting for something to eat. This is the horrible truth behind the lies of Operation Enduring Victory. My lies. Lies designed to inspire millions of innocents to sacrifice themselves in battle. Why? One reason. To buy time for you and the work you will do here. Zero day. The day that life on Earth ceases to exist is coming fast. It cannot be stopped. The hope of Zero Dawn is that something new might come after. But I will leave it to Elizabeth Sobek to shine that thin ray of light into the darkness. Harris, out. That, that doesn't make sense. Life on Earth didn't cease to exist. He said it could not be stopped. But it was. Somehow... Somehow Elizabeth saved us. I've, I've got to keep looking. Find out how she did it. Well, he did say that... They have some hope for life after the apocalypse. I think you are the life after the apocalypse. Kestrels. They got in. Through the vents. Let nothing stop you from learning the truth. Spread out! If it moves, kill it! What is this place? Tomb? <laughs> These assholes are ruining my fun. I just want to come here and learn stuff. I don't want to fight. Yes, give me audio files, yes. There is some mistake. 
I don't understand why I was brought here. Why would you show me these things? I know that there's already a lot to take in. In the waiting area, I was seated with a noble laureate in biophysics and a monk, I think. He spoke neither English nor Mandarin. It is very strange. And General Harris? What was he talking about? The robot swarm, the pharaoh plague? I understand it is terrible, but it really cannot be stopped. Why tell us this? There are people in Shanghai, my friends, my family. They have joined Operation in... It is for nothing? We will all die? We're going to be able to answer some of these questions. I just want to know why I am here. It doesn't make sense to me. You were brought here because of your skill set. No, that can't be right. I am an art historian. I know Dutch masters, Japanese calligraphy, uh, Gerhard Richter. What does that matter now? So they picked experts in all fields, even if they're not. This might even the odds. Technically useful for the apocalypse. We're oh, under shit! Attack. Why did you Good. drop the we're gun, too close girl? To tribal primitive stuff us now. The data points. What did they contain? Hold on, I'm pretty sure there's one more guy. So yeah, they, they just hired, I guess, the most top people of every field so that they have a diversity of information and knowledge. You previously worked for Faro Automated Systems. On the chariot line self-replication routines? I came here thinking this was a, a rendition. When your people took me, I, I thought, about time. I've been trying to swallow the guilt every day since since uh would you like to take a moment no 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 i, I just i really hoped zero dawn was a way to undo it all my work and i'm sorry to say i was ever proud of it but tech could really sell a concept and 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 in the labs in the the, the light of creation that first test run when, when you saw they understood their own structures, could rebuild themselves from memory and light? There were no limits. God, there were no limits. That should have been your first clue. Want to discuss? Whew. So Mama, she was right. Pardon? My mother, she took her Bible real serious. Not just Texas bubble serious, Pentecostal serious. Favorite chapter? Revelations. Now, I didn't always understand her on account of all that speaking in tongues and such, but when she did use her words, there was always end times this and lake of fire that on account of sinful lifestyles. Speaking of which, mind if I smoke? A tobacco cigarette. Sorry, darling. My taste run classic. Compliments your team tracked me down. Been a price on my head 18 months now. Sterling Malky was me, don't mind admitting. Been plenty of snakesters chasing the bounty too. But I kept the zigging to their zag. How'd you finger me? I believe Giggity. Dr. Sobek listed you as an alpha candidate. Priority snatch and grab. Always suspected she had a little thing for me. Hey. I don't suppose you got real coffee in this place. You know, blood coffee, conflict cappuccinos. Mr. Tate, I'm clearing you to proceed. Just go. Okay. Next one. Candidate interview. Look, uh, let's cut the mystery. You're building a colony ship. It's obvious. And it's not going to fly. I mean, literally. Remember the Odyssey? That multinational heap of space junk that's been in graveyard orbit since 57? That went nowhere real slow, and you have to get somewhere real fast. Uh, do you have any idea the immensity of the challenge to prep a new colony ship in time? To be clear, I'm not a worker on the project. Do you even understand how few people it could save? The whole generation ship concept is, is not gonna happen. It's the first thing you'd abandon in favor of embryonics. Uh, for that kind of storage, we're talking a lot of bulk, a lot of power, a lot of resources. So even if you do it, even if you build it and point it at Sirius X, there's no room for people on that thing, all right? 
if you could try to remain calm. You people are crazy if you think you're getting off this rock. No one's getting off. Medical. Okay. Some people couldn't take the information. So, some kind of an arc? ...with Suzanne Alpert, environmental scientist. Doctor? I'm sorry, I wasn't, uh... Just stating your name. What were you thinking about, Doctor? Nothing the General said. Not really. I was on the Syzygy East response team in 2051, just after the second earthquake compromised the reactor. I still dream about it after all of these years. No! Crap, okay, I have to stop her playback. I have for messed up. Elizabeth Sobek. You've heard I'll go, the bad news. I'll go back. And it's all true. The Pharaoh Plague is devouring the biosphere. Life itself will cease to exist. But does that have to be the end? What if we could give life a future? What if we could build a kind of seed from which, on a dead planet, life could blossom anew? This is the aim, the hope, of Project Zero Dawn. To create a super-intelligent, fully automated terraforming system and bring life back from lifelessness. What would such a system require? At its core, it would need a true AI, fully capable of making the trillions of decisions necessary to reconstitute the biosphere. An immortal guardian, devoted to the reflourishing of life. All we mother. call it Gaia. Mother Nature as an AI. But that's just the core of the system. She will need to be surrounded and empowered by a comprehensive suite of subordinate functions. Think of them as extensions of Gaia's mind, each dedicated to a specific purpose. Now these aren't AIs, but make no mistake, each presents an engineering challenge more profound than anything the human species has ever before attempted. Hardware that preserves and then gestates the billions of seeds and embryos from which life will be reborn. The construction of underground facilities to hold it all. And that's just the start. We don't have to build the entire system. The beauty of a fully automated terraforming system is that it can build itself. Now over the days to come, you'll learn how all these functions, all these pieces that you'll be working on, fit together. How we'll race the clock to execute our harvest initiatives, write the software, build the tech and the facilities. How we'll lock it down and seal it up before the inevitable occurs. But even more important, you'll know how it doesn't end here. How Gaia will generate those deactivation codes General Harris talked about. And build the transmission arrays to broadcast them, shutting down the feral robots for good. How Gaia will not just build, but imagine any conceivable robot it needs to do its work across centuries. From detoxifying the Earth's ravaged atmosphere and poisoned seas, to the regreening of the Earth from cryopreserved seed stocks, to rewilding the Earth with animal life. And then, when all that is done, how a new generation of human beings spawned at cradle facilities around the globe will partake of Apollo. The vast archive of human knowledge and cultural achievement from which they will learn of us, our world. And most important, how not to repeat our mistakes. It's not an impossible dream. It is within our grasp if we work tirelessly and stop at nothing to achieve it. We can't stop life from ending. But if you will help me, help Gaia, we can give it a future. Join me and help make that future real. You, the whole earth destroyed, but then remade? Yes, by a machine, a machine of creation. Elizabeth. Did this for life, for us. But why Hades then? If it was part of Gaia, how did it end up in the wreckage of a feral robot? And why 
doesn't want to kill me. And Apollo, the Archive of Knowledge, what happened to that? I'm as confused as you are. Maybe the answers lie ahead. I'm sure they do. That explains all the the, the animal-like creatures like grazers. I wondered why they exist. I, I thought it was like some kind of AI evolution, but they built it them specifically accurate, for that. Yes. So these mechanical monstrosities, they don't just kill people, they feed off them. Not just people, all organic matter. Every living thing dissolved into nutrients. Millennia of evolution liquefied. Yeah. The miracle of life reduced to bloody biofuel. Yeah. In a word, yes. Who did this? Pharaoh? That asshole. Is he here? Okay. Guy's not happy about it. You know I'm in possession of the information regarding the true nature and purpose of Project Zero Dawn. Classify far above top secret. It's such regret that you cannot be allowed to leave this facility. There are three options available to you at this point. Please consider each uh, carefully. So one is participation. Part of a team based on your area of expertise, you should be aware that the way forward will be difficult and the project's outcome is uncertain. You'll be expected to work a minimum 80 hours per week and your communications with family will be strictly limited and monitored in real time. Upon successful completion of the project, you and your immediate family or two persons of your choosing will be transferred to the uh, Elysium sealed habitat to live out the remainder of your natural lives. Dude, indefinite detention. To choose to decline, you will be given 48 hours to reconsider, after which your decision to refuse participation will be considered irrevocable. Every reasonable effort will be made to make your team come your term of confinement as comfortable as possible but you will not be permitted to contact the outside world and death within 18 months due to the viral plague is inevitable when zero dawn the facility is abandoned detainees who wish not to offer medical euthanasia euthanasia will be released so that's how they died and the third option is euthanasia and then it calls for question the purpose of continuing to live if you will, would prefer to end your life at this point a pain-free medical euthanasia is available oh my god this is god It's just a game, but it kind of kind of hits you hard. Jesus Christ. Okay, there's a lot to talk about, but I want to gather some more information first before I give you my thoughts. Uh, Debriefing our version too. It's vitally important that candidates choose to participate in Project Zero Dawn voluntarily and knowingly without additional coercion and without value judgment on the part of the council. Yeah. Confirm for candidates that they were selected due to their skill sets and accomplishments. Emphasize that their dedicated participation in Zero Dawn will increase the project's chances of success. Okay, so it's basically how to convince people to join. Can you make questions the fairness of their selection? Validate each such objections as normal, even admirable responses. Likewise, candidates may balk at the morality of extending their lifespans and those loved ones beyond zero day. Validate their hesitation. Acknowledge that while the reward of Elysium is not fair, it will be earned. If possible, redirect their ethical misgivings towards greater commitment to the project. Okay, so it's it's basically a guide of how to deal with however the people react. This is this is a lot. This is a lot. Decision interview. Of course I'll do it. To be given the opportunity to rebuild what I... Uh, the, the, the damage that I... Well, I, I don't feel worthy of it, but, but I, I will do it, absolutely. I want to stress that this was never about your culpability. Uh, it, it is to me. Dr. Sobek, Margo, they were smart to get out of Pharaoh when they did, but, but not one of us took it as a warning sign. Intruder! They, they get her! told ourselves they weren't cut out for Whatever the PCR do, don't die but now. The, the, the better than rapid innovation. It just told ourselves they weren't cut out for the PCR like a balls. But that's the, the better than rapid innovation. I, a better at competing, better than the next guy, a, a better killing machine. They're not coming. It's just amazing how. It's just amazing no. how. I didn't want to destroy our species from the path of you. I'm, I'm, I'm done with that life. <sighs> My family to have a place in this world. Uh, Only the I don't. I don't want to fight, I just want to hear more stories. Anyway, I can charge him? Let's just charge him, let's see what happens. Got it, got it, got it. 
Got it. Take health. Got it. Got it. God damn it. No, me first, me first. Motherfucker. You won't ruin this for me. Zero dawn. It is art in a way. An expression on the grandest scale. But there is so much unfairness. Why was I chosen? Was it decided by committee? By algorithm? My family will be saved because I happen to graduate in art history? Is yep. this right? Dr. Souve? Christina Souve? Yes. These will keep. That's that's exactly what that document was uh, about when we when we were skimming. They have to kind of convince everyone who kind of thinks, you know, this might not be justified, why am I here? I hashed it out with them, what the point of Artemis was. I made it clear I wasn't on board for a global zoo. <laughs> we haven't exactly proved ourselves to be great custodians in the past few thousand years. So the idea of a reconstituted biosphere, well, it's horrifying, isn't it? A complete horror show. We have no right to take a best guess at this stuff. But the alternative? Nothingness. For there to have been all this and then nothing. And with Charles Ronson running the show, I respect him. He's got a passion to him. He's hot-blooded. So I said I'll do it. I'll put my all into this, literally. When the project is done, I'll take the medical option, thank you. The counselor said I might change my mind. I told him that he didn't know me very well then. For life's sake, I'll do the dirty work. But I want no part of this pathetic, attenuated future on offer. I'm an outdoors man. Never did like the feel of solid state lighting on my skin. <laughs> and a wee bit of a claustrophobe, anyway. I like how we're getting all kinds of different perspectives. Now, those lame FBI black hats at Mockingbird back in the day. I enjoyed schooling them, but maybe I went in too hard on this poor counselor. She was cute and just going down a checklist after all. Yeah. Couldn't expect her to see how ridiculous Zero D's ambitions are. God's own budget thrown at a kid playing with a hologram sculptor. Palms up, honey. Another one of these. I'm just calling it like it is. Need to find the right configuration. Hey, look, Mom, I'm making nature. Now, if nature is so important, why not let nature take its course? Extinction? That's natural. Zero Dawn? No, ma'am. That ain't. Heck, it's so unnatural it'd be called an abomination back home, and you know it. That's why you're hiding it. Meanwhile, my little honey of a counselor, she's munching the inside of her cheek. Bad habit. <laughs> she chewed one of her nails, too. Just one. Not your day, was it, little sweet pea? Saw her quota slipping away. <laughs> Said, I assume you intend to decline the assignment, Mr. Tate. <laughs> you kidding me? 18 months hard labor in exchange for 30 years lounging around Elysium watching porn? <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> uh, it's not funny. That's actually kind of sad. But sure. Well, what's this now? Hey, I'm done with Brett's incompetence, okay? Somehow, he managed to install an H-emitter oh, note backwards. Everything's in reverse. Maybe there's a storage I don't get paid to clean up Brett's messes. If you want it fixed, send him up to storage for a new emitter, not me. Parker out. Backwards. Well, there's the emitter. <sighs> How do I get up there? Can I just jump up there? It's never that easy, is it? Okay. Is there a way around? Yeah, I like how they also have different cultures and backgrounds, all different kinds of accents. They really gave us the impression that they picked everyone all experts from all over the place and now i'm lost i can do this one first maybe that opens a door done i should check the door nearby which one is that one over there 
Maybe this door goes up. But, but this door, right? Waypoint's pointing me in the other direction, but I'll check this door out first. Yeah, no, it just goes up. That's where we want to go. Yeah, that's all right. So everyone who is alive now, all these humans, found one, looks intact, are nothing more than all these people here, who are experts in their own fields. So these are just the, not even descendants. Actually, no, maybe they are descendants. I guess they had babies since then, but the people who exist now are either descendants of the exact people who took part in this operation. Or they are the people, that do like the Aloy. Now let's get that door open. So that explains why Aloy doesn't have a mother. She was born from the machine. So that just begs the question, when does this machine decide when to give birth to whom? And why was Elizabeth's genetic double last? You know what I mean? Up left down right up left down right up okay so i guess this one was the one that's the other way around i want to do some more brainstorm ah shit i want to do some more brainstorming on everything that we've just heard but i gotta i gotta do this right first go up and then you go right and then you go down you're right and you go down it's better work that did it door should have power now to see what lies beyond it. Look at that door go. Damn. That's far away. Oh, it's not. It's right here. Oh. How'd they get in? Eclipse. They're here. Avoid contact. Lines look good. Gaia. It's up there. Second floor. Can you reach it? So much for avoiding contact. I'm just gonna go get the big gun and shoot everybody. No! Why wouldn't they let? God damn this game! Unbelievable. Unbelievablemente. There's only three of them and one boss, so. I see something. Now, <laughs> bitch. At least headshot him, come on, point black range, headshot the bitch. I will teach you to bleed. Oh Teach me to bleed? It's a big boy too. Three big boys again. Fall before the shadow. What if I hide? What if he doesn't know where I am? Oh, he knew. There you go. That's all of them, right? Oh, no, there's another one up there. Oh, shit, a whole mess of them. Holy shit. All of them are big boys. What the fuck? What the fuck? Like a somebody. Fuck you. Oh, really? That guy hears it? The guy that's farthest away? You kidding me? Oh, motherfucker, he's gonna come down here. That was bad. Oh god. Come out, where? Don't tell me how to live my life. Turn up anything. Oh shit! No! 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 Now! 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 Alert. Structural failure prevents access. You know what else is a structural failure? My life, bitch. You cannot escape our grass. <laughs> bitch! Now kick a lady! Get ready for the shadow sting! Woo! Alright, the rest of her are upstairs. Good. I should be healing using the potions and not my berries, actually. Your end has come. Your end has come. I don't even get upstairs. 
Woo! Go on the S of the stairs. Ah, you motherfucker. That's your problem. Come on. Come on. Oh. That's the last of them. Indeedy. H not structural failure. Repeat. Or not. You mean or not? Oh, son of a bitch. Dude, there's so many of them. What the fuck? You like a somebody, like a somebody, fuck you, good boy, big boy. <laughs> like a somebody, big boy, fuck you. Don't lose her. Oh, strike him, come on. Run. Oh shit, dodge. Like a somebody, fuck you, big boy. Get eyes on him. Damn it! Ah. Go jump, 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 jump. Uh. Fuck somebody, fuck you, big boy. You cannot run from righteousness. Get a river, right there. I'm out of ammo. Fuck like somebody, fuck you, big boy. Big boy! Room's clear. For a oh. moment, anyway. Then get moving. You have to find Gaia. Shut up! God, this guy, I swear to God. I'm bringing this with me. I gotta compensate. Hello, I'm Margot Shen, and this is Hephaestus. As the name might tip you off, this is going to be the subordinate function that Gaia will use to make lots and lots of robots. Her personal forge. Except... It's not that simple. Um, so like, you probably noticed that only about a third of you are robotics engineers. The rest, experts in machine cognition, virtual heuristics, that stuff. Well, that's because we aren't going to be the ones designing and building robots. The last thing we want is to burden Guy with a bunch of outmoded 21st century designs. Waste of time. Our purpose is to empower Gaia to build the robots, and not just build, imagine, from scratch. Any robot she needs for any conceivable purpose, designed and fabricated at a snap of a finger. Hers. Her finger. So, Hephaestus isn't really the forge. It's more like the knowledge of craft and ingenuity of a master smith to wield the hammer. Encoded as software. Virtual creativity made real. Gaia's already learning. In simulation, she's doing some very creative things with fractal assembly and animal morphologies. Her designs aren't about to win the Liam Prize anytime soon. But hey, everyone has to start somewhere. So, yeah, time to get started. Let's do it. I can't spare the weight. I don't get it. She's very optimistic. Part. It's a little technical in places. If Gaia was designed to save life, why would the robots it makes attack people? Perhaps it loves some forms of life more than others. The derangement. The machines weren't always so angry. True. Mostly they were docile until... Until 15 years ago. Okay, let's find out why though. So, from Elizabeth. Margo, I doubted your brilliance in this... If I doubted your brilliance in designs, I wouldn't have picked you as the alpha. You need to stop worrying about your age and communication style. You are who you are. Have confidence in yourself. Case in point, Elias drafted your plan for the construction and stocking of bootstrap silos to store new raw material is excellent. This combined with your design for the AM foundry core and the foundry site selection plan add up to a comprehensive plan. It starts time to start construction. One detail. Consult with Okilo before you finalize the silo inventories. The Festus' first task will be to fabricate the robots that will construct the waveform broadcast towers Minerva will use to transmit the deactivation codes. Ah, so any exotic materials needed for the towers should be accounted for in the inventory plan. 10, 15 years ago. For years, Hephaestus has been forcing cauldrons to make aggressive machines. I've seen it myself, in the cauldrons. Stalkers, ravagers, the Thunderjaw. How could it do that? And why? Why indeed? Well, she did say that whatever Hephaestus, Hephaestus will learn, and whatever Hephaestus thinks it needs to survive, or humanity, or I've seen these life before. needs to survive, in cauldrons. But of course, the birthing places of Gaia's machines. 
yeah, whatever Gaia needs, the machine will build. There was another audio file somewhere. So that leads me to believe that the machines have somehow interpreted the fact that humans are a danger, perhaps, to them. That's why they create robots that attack humans. That's my interpretation from it. Uh, from Margot to Elizabeth, you weren't kidding about guys. Uh, Predilection for animal morphology, sure, not totally unexpected. Given the rough natural terrain her boss will have to navigate, but I agree that says some natural, there's something deeper going on here. Her designs aren't just functional, they almost feel like tributes, is the word that comes to mind. As though she's, as though she's already mourning their loss. Holy shit. And not just for disappearing fauna of our time, but creatures from the fossil record too. References to megafauna in some of her designs. So cool. Whatever Gaia thinks of, professors will empower her to build it. I just wish we could still be around a century or two to see what she makes. Okay. So it's learning from evolution. What animals need to be created to sustain life. That's why the robots look like animals. That's why grazers are called grazers. Clever. Ah, you died. Screw you, bitch. I think this is it. Elizabeth Silbeck's office. More eclipse. Careful now. Don't tell me I live my life. Ooh. Jump down. Welcome Fine. to Apollo. The collective memory of the human species and the wellspring of knowledge for future generations. Uh-huh. I am Samina Ebaji. Until recently, I was director of the International Collective Memory Institute in New Tehran. As a heritage professional, I devoted my career to the preservation of human knowledge, creative endeavor, and cultural achievement. Apollo is, therefore, the ultimate embodiment of a lifelong passion, albeit under the very worst circumstances imaginable. The challenges before us are Specifically, we will have to design and implement four major initiatives simultaneously. First, the construction of data repositories in cradle facilities uh, around the world, away. ensuring redundancy. Second, the collection and processing of the projected 180 million discrete data entries. Damn. 42 zettabytes of data in Mandarin, English, Spanish, and Arabic. Third, the transferal and encoding of all that data onto DNA encapsulated in synthetic fossils. The only medium capacious and durable enough to safeguard it without degradation. Oh, what? Hard way. <laughs> okay, so based on that, we learned that whatever they needed. They collect it as data, and that data they transform into DNA. Presumably they could also go the other way around. Pick out whatever DNA they need and turn that into a robot. I don't want to fight you guys, I just want to collect audio files. Where the hell are they? It's the big boy. I need to take them down in one hit. Big, big, big boy, where the hell, like a somebody? Big, big boy, you go the other way, that's a good boy, I'm gonna stab you in the back. Cause you a motherfucker. Big, big boy. Like a somebody, big boy. There's a lot, I, I can't even deal with this entire area in one video, I'm gonna have to end the video at some point, soon. And make a second video out of this, because this is a lot of information. Going the other way, big boy. Like a somebody, go the other way, big boy. One more guy. One more guy, then we listen to a couple more audio files, and then I gotta... I think I gotta end the video. I wanna play more, trust me. But... Can't make the videos too long. Big big boy, come here like a somebody. 
Move around, please. I got somebody. Move around, please, big boy. Oops. I'm here. Spotted. No, you're not. You're good. Ah, shit. Oh, look, he doesn't know where to go. He's just scared. That's the last of them. Alone once more. Oh. What should have been a cave of wonders? Look around. See if anything is left. There's a lot left. What is this? Dr. Sobek, please archive this testimonial in Apollo. We'll cross reference to all mentions of my name and Operation Enduring Victory. My name is General Aaron Harris. From 2060 to 2066, I served as the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the highest ranked officer of the United States Armed Forces. The tenure of my command included strategic planning and oversight of Operation Enduring Victory. A falsehood perpetrated on the civilian populations of the No! No, I wanna listen to that. I gotta listen, I gotta find that. Hold on, sorry. Okay, here we go. A falsehood perpetrated on the civilian populations of the United States and other nations during the last 14 months of life on this planet. Before the Pharaoh Plague, I did my job and did it well. I was bold and decisive, crafty in political maneuvers. It wasn't an accident that I rose to my position and became the commander of the largest mechanized force ever assembled. But to what end? My only lasting achievement was the extinction of life on Earth. And my one redeeming act, if any, was to delay that extinction by days or weeks, by throwing more death at it. It is my hope that there will be no need for men like me in the world to come. If you are one of the people of that future world listening to this message, please note that I am sorry and that I wish you well. God damn, this guy. My heart crack. I can't imagine what they must have been thinking or to be. I'd have to leave something else behind. What they were going through in the final weeks. See, now I'm interested in finding out what happened to them after they finished the project. When they went on living in their little ark. Wherever that may be. Maybe they found a way to survive even longer. You know what I mean? Maybe. Can't be too prepared. Elizabeth is still alive. Okay, I'm gonna look for some more audio po points. Here's a text file that I didn't pick up just now from Samina Ebaji, the lady who told us about the DNA stuff. Uh, you know, before an exhaustive review of the data, a year ago, but every other solution has one more fatal shortcoming. It's too heavy to transport, too massive to install in the allotted space, too power intensive over the centuries, too prone to failure uh, past three to four hundred years. Encapsulated DNA will easily hold the 40 plus zettabytes we're projecting for Apollo. There are still many details to finalize, of course, to which to start with, we need to select the inert material in which we'll embed the molecules, already testing 16 Canada materials, as well as design and fabricate the power systems and sealed uh, reliquaries that will keep the DNA at minus uh, 18 degrees Celsius for 1,000 years. So there are a whole bunch of uh, uh, DNA that's, that, uh, that they periodically release as a child. That's why we're here. That's why Aloy is here. So long as I assure you uh, that it didn't factor into my decision, may I confess that I deem entirely fitting, indeed uh, propitious, that we will be using the very building blocks of life to preserve human knowledge from mechanical extinction. It is not just ironic, but also heroic. Life as a hero beating back the forces of oblivion. In any case, much to do until next time. Okay, I walked around and I didn't find another file. I guess we got all of them in this room. Let's get jump to the next room and then we we'll have to end the video. Ooh. To Hades. Bitch! Zerodon's extinction failsafe protocol. The ultimate killer app. Now, I know what you're thinking. The purpose of Gaia is to resurrect life. So why give her a subordinate function, only purpose of which is to wipe out life all over again? I mean, what the what? Just bum crazy, ain't it? Well, no, it isn't. Reconstituting a biosphere? That's a tall order. Tech smart as Gaia may be, odds are she won't get it right the first time. I mean, imagine you're Gaia, 
200 years from now and this new biosphere growing, it's all gone wrong. Alkalines are skyrocketing, coniferous forests eroding under the lash of superstorms that would have drowned Noah. It's chaos, a spinning top that won't stop wobbling. Now what are you gonna do? Release phase one organisms into that hot mess? Hope their CO2 and methane can balance out what you got started? Hell no. What you're gonna do, Gaia, is step aside while Hades takes over and does what you're just too darn nurturing and life-loving to do. Which is burn that misbegotten mess of a biosphere to the ground so Gaia can start over. Oh, okay. God. Not burn, more like reverse terraforming operations and suffocating. But you get the idea. Hades takes the biosphere back to zero. Square one, blank slate. And then, only then, does it hand the steering wheel back to Gaia and say, try again, old girl. And better this time, or we'll have to do this again. That's Hades. It's pretty badass when you think about it. Extinction on demand. Death on speed dial. All for the greater good, of course, but still, kind of metal. <laughs> So welcome to Hades. Welcome to the void. Holy crap. Okay, so if that's the original purpose of Hades, why does it want me extinct? Yeah, sir. We specific. need more data. And yeah, yeah, yeah. How does it end up in the wreckage of a pharaoh titan getting worshipped by the eclipse like some kind of god? Tell me about it. Noise complaints. That's why Hades laugh shaking the walls, death metal. Oh, okay, so I was complaining about him listening to his death metal while he works. Yeah, no, Lizzie, this is how I go to another uh, without death. Okay, so I was complaining about. You are Aloy. Keep searching. What's this one? Hades Protocol. Hey, here's just popped out of blue. Earned it. Oh, finally figured out gold six. Gold lock solution. Extreme excessive authority. Any worth ten thousand nine hundred five hundred seven hundred one. Too hard. And it degraded the Gaia core. Sure, it pried her figurative fingers off the figurative driving wheel so Hades could take control, but by breaking her fingers, sometimes her arms too. So that couldn't fly. Everything depends on Gaia taking control back after Hades has done its business, so I had to find a solution that didn't leave Gaia any worse for the wear. Too soft, and Gaia only pretends to relinquish control. In simulation after simulation, Hades would take command of the terraforming system and reverse operations, only to have Gaia lurk in the background, quietly re-reversing processes and falsifying telemetry to hide its interference. Sneaky. Uh, I swear it ain't nothing Gaia would do to keep li life going, even when it's just simulated plant life. Turns out the just right solution is to isolate Gaia in a protective code shell. Here we go. Preserving its integrity and then unseat it from command position so Hades can slip into the figurative chat captain's chair and work its magic. So those blues are coming on strong now. I'm not describing it so clear, but pretty sure it'll work. Okay. So there's a kind of like a power battle between Hades and Gaia. That's why it's like the god, all mother, that creates life, wants to preserve life. And Hades' job is to destroy life. So there's kind of a power grab between them. And he can't really find a sweet spot. So how to balance that out? We're back to oh, back to Samina. Let's see what she has to say. She's all about heritage. Spell concerns Apollo. Your 666 submission just five days. So what a doozy! Despite earlier warnings, any appropriate material you chose to submit two 65 holographic remasters of acknowledged classics or stream exploitation cinema. Allow me. Thank you on two counts. Forgive me the pleasure of rejecting your submission, thereby consigning your favorite Eastern European torture flicks and their ilk to the dust heap of oblivion. It truly warms my heart that, to know that I've saved future humanity from the ordeal of experiencing not just one, but all 16 installments of making a millipede. Don't worry, the Pasolini material has already been preserved. Extreme perhaps, but art. And two, for clarifying a concept that has so long been ambiguous and ethically fraught for archivists such as myself, the definition of, s of obscenity. You have freed me from the subjective quagmire embodied in Judges Potter's famous utterance, I know it when I see it. Thanks to you, I can now apply a single objective criterion. If Travis Tate submitted it, it's obscene. Damn. First, you might invest the time you have spent preparing further submissions, and I don't know all your assigned work. We have a world to save. <laughs> okay, they did not get along very well. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Alright. Let's step into the next area. And then I'm gonna call it a day. Welcome to the 
Welcome to Eleuthia, the crown and king of Gaia's subordinate functions. For it is by Eleuthia that the human race will continue to exist. I am Patrick Brochard Klein, the Alpha in charge of this program. Now let one thing be perfectly clear from the outset. Eleuthia is not a genetic engineering project. Our goal is to preserve the human genome, not alter it. A snapshot of human genetic diversity, literally frozen in time. The genetic quintessence of our species, unmodified. Under my watch, our activities and initiatives will comply with the 2034 clone provisions and the 2048 rally accords. Now that may seem a quaint, even trivial concern to you in light of present circumstances. But, as one of the authors of the Accords, it is far from trivial to me. The practical challenges before us are staggering in scope and complexity, but not insurmountable. No. Global collation and provisional storage of zygotes, perfection of exogenic technologies, design and perfection of servitors to provide nurture and inculcation during early child development. All of these program components must and will proceed in tandem. To say nothing of the breakneck construction of cradle facilities at sites around the world. So... Si vous êtes prêt, let us begin. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna figure out what he did on the next video. I'm afraid I have to end the video. I can't make long videos. I really wish I could. This is so much to absorb. This is amazing. This is such good stuff. I also wondered in the beginning why, you know, in this post-apocalyptic world, everyone can speak English. I thought it was just, yo, know, they had to pick a language for the game. You can't just create a new language or something. But I'm sure that there's some kind of a reason why everyone can speak English. I, I cannot wait for the next video. I have to end it here, Legos. I'm so sorry. I wish I could play some more, but I have to end it here. I'll upload the next one as soon as I can and find out more. We're going through each of these programs that they listed in the beginning um, and finding out what they all did individually. I'm loving it so much. So not much action today. It's just more about the storytelling, um, more about the background. And I don't know about you, but I am loving this. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Stay safe. Love you and bye-bye.